Have you ever walked up to your closet and just gone, ugh, there is nothing in here I'm excited about wearing? Well, I think a lot of us have been there. I definitely have, but lately I've been thinking a lot about how to curate my wardrobe, how to make sure I have pieces that I really love and appreciate, also how to whittle it down through minimalism. And I thought I would just share a number of the specifics of strategies I've used that have really helped me in getting excited about my wardrobe again or in being thoughtful about my shopping so that I'm only purchasing things that I'm really gonna use. So today I'm gonna share a number of tips to shop smart and build your dream wardrobe. The first strategy I've used is to only purchase things that make me feel really good. Because realistically, if you don't feel good in the piece, you're just not gonna wear it. And it's just gonna drag down the rest of your wardrobe. When you have so many pieces that don't make you feel good, they mask the ones that do. And yes, I know in principle we all know this, but I think sometimes when we get to the cash register or to the cart and we wanna buy something, sometimes we're not thinking in terms of what we actually will enjoy using over and over again. So using that as a metric and a quick question I ask myself before I buy something has really helped me curate a wardrobe that I'm a little bit more excited about. A second strategy I've used is to save up for the dream version rather than just getting the less good version. In the past, I'd buy like a million versions of the same thing Thing just to try to achieve an aesthetic or a specific type of thing. And when I look back, I probably spent just as much money, if not more money, trying to achieve the look of something than if I had just purchased the dream thing in the first place. And of course, there are some financial limitations to this. You can't do this for every single dream piece you've ever wanted. But I think if you've really been scouring the internet for a dupe of something you really, really love, taking the time to just save up for it and to invest in the piece you actually want will help you adore that item and appreciate your wardrobe more. I think it can also save you money in that if you remind yourself you're saving up for this dream item, you're less likely to buy a whole bunch of other things, even things totally unrelated to the item. A third strategy is to engage in self-care and show yourself and your body you care about it. I think that so much of how we present ourselves to the world, how we feel about us presenting ourselves to the world isn't just about the physical clothes we're wearing, it's how we feel about ourselves, it's how we perceive ourselves, and also on some level just how we feel about more than just our physical clothes, but also our skin and our hair and our nails and just how we present ourselves in general. Like one way to think about it is if you're having a really, really good hair day, you feel good even if you're wearing a sack of potatoes. I think putting a little bit more effort into some of these other things can actually boost your confidence and help you enjoy your wardrobe even more. Plus, it just makes needing a perfect wardrobe less important if you feel good about yourself and going into a space and presenting you as you. I think this even involves going to the dentist, going to the doctor, making sure that you're healthy, doing things to take care of yourself. By doing that, you're communicating to yourself, you matter. One example of this for me is that over the last many months, I have dealt with what has felt like real hair loss or hair thinning. My hair historically has been very thin, but I don't know if it's stress or something to do with my MS diagnosis or my medications for that or just stress about that in general and getting that diagnosis. It also affected how I felt like I was presenting myself and my confidence. And it wasn't anything horrible to a really medically scary degree, but it was something that was bothering me. And so when MD Hair reached out to me to do a sponsorship on the channel, I was like, this is providential. This is exactly what I've been looking for. Because when I looked up MD Hair to find more information about it, I found out that it was this science-backed system to help promote hair regrowth. Their formulas are created by dermatologists, real doctors, that the ingredients in the formulas are clinically proven to help hair regrowth, and also that it seemed like a lot of people were extremely satisfied with the results. 
You take a quiz and then they have technology that analyzes that quiz and the results from a photo of your scalp to give a customized treatment kit that targets your particular needs. It's not a one size fits all, it's tailored to you. They also send you a variety of products so that they're targeting the hair loss in numerous ways. So for example, for me, they've sent me a customized hair care shampoo and conditioner, a customized hair care serum, a customized hair wellness supplement, and marine collagen. These products help stop hair loss, heal your scalp, and make your hair stronger. Though I haven't used them yet for the full two to three months that's recommended, already I feel like my hair feels way fuller and it hasn't even been the full time quite yet. One nice thing too is that it's pretty easy to do. It's not super high maintenance. It's also way more affordable than a lot of other options like this. What's cool is that right now, if you use the link in my description box and the promo code below, you can get 70% off of your first order of full-sized products, which is an incredible deal to be able to just try it out and see what you think for yourself. To me, again, I think the most reassuring thing is that it is backed by science. There have been clinical studies on the ingredients in these formulas, and so I can feel safe and good about it. Truthfully, I'm so excited about it. I wanted to share it with you all, and I'm also grateful to MD Hair for reaching out and for sponsoring this video and supporting me. Anyway, let's get back to the rest of the topic of this video. I know that was a little bit of a tangent. A fourth strategy I use to be excited about my closet is to be willing to take risks. I think if you're willing to go for what you like, as opposed to just what you feel like you should wear, you might enjoy your wardrobe a lot more. So often I see something online and I kind of feel like it's too cool for me, I couldn't pull that off, whatever it is. But if you never experiment with your style, if you never have fun with it, I feel like your style just starts to feel stale. And I do think also in this day and age, it's possible to take a risk because you can order it to your home and then decide to return it. And that's not the hardest thing in the world. It's annoying if you do that too much, but a little bit of that allows you to take some healthy risks, try some new things, and find those things that make you feel really good when you put them on. Because sometimes when you have a look that's special, that's a little bit different, it just gives you that little bit of extra bit of confidence that makes you feel good. A fifth strategy is sort of a thought experiment in that I want you to think about the top one or two favorite fashion influencers that you follow, people that really exude the style that you're going for. And ask yourself the question, would these one or two or three people approve of the purchase that I'm about to make? By asking yourself that question before you purchase something, you can really question whether this new item is in line with the look that you're going for in the future. Because I don't know about you, but previously sometimes in the moment something catches my eye and I just think, ooh, that's cute, I wanna buy it, and I just buy it right then and there, rather than stepping back for a second and thinking, is this piece really in line with the overarching style and vibe I wanna go for? I mean, ideally you wanna become your own sort of style icon, but thinking in terms of somebody else somehow helps me put things in context and just try to focus on what my ideal is, what I'm really going for, rather than just what feels good in the moment. It gives me this mental image that is more tangible for me to work with. Another strategy is to be aware of what colors, fabrics, and styles you actually enjoy wearing. Those pieces that are really bold color that don't really work with my skin tone end up in the back of the closet never used, and they end up just covering the pieces that I would actually love to wear more often. And sometimes I'll buy something because I think it's cute, but it's got an itchy material or a material that's extremely wrinkly that I never end up wanting to iron. By asking yourself the question, what do I already have that's like it? Do I wear that piece a lot? I'm able to refocus on buying things that I'll actually use rather than just buying things because I like them or I'm attracted to them. A seventh strategy is a basic one, but it's important, and it's to declutter your wardrobe and to only keep the things that make you feel good. Because if you declutter your closet and you have fewer objects in there, and it's just the ones that you're excited about, that you feel confident in, then when you walk up to your wardrobe, you're picking between the greats, the best of your wardrobe, rather than just looking at a bunch of your least favorites. Sometimes we have this urge to keep things that aren't actually things we feel good in, but they're more an aspirational self. Like, 
it's a piece that I would love to start wearing more or that if I changed something about myself and it fit me better or whatever, I could be that person eventually. But realistically, those types of pieces aren't bringing me joy now. Chances that I'll actually use them if I haven't in the past are probably pretty low. And quite often there are actually very few things that you feel really good in. And so often those few things get covered up. So just have a real honest conversation with yourself when you're decluttering about whether the pieces are just there because you feel like you should use them or whether they're there because you love them. An eighth tip, and this one was groundbreaking to me, was to remind myself that there is no single truth about what the best thing to wear is. Whatever kind of event it is, whatever place you're going or job you're working, there is no one truth about what the right thing to wear is or what the best thing or the most attractive thing to wear is. Because ultimately, it's all about what you're drawn to, what you like, as opposed to what other people tell you you should wear. And I feel like sometimes when we lack the confidence to just own what we like, we're swayed into wearing things that we think other people will like, and then we lose our identities as far as our style and what kind of energy we want to be bringing to a space. So I think this last one is just to encourage you to own your own preferences and to say, you know, even if somebody else judges me for wearing this, it doesn't mean that that is the truth. And I'm allowed to have my own opinion. I'm allowed to experiment a little bit, to have fun with my wardrobe and to wear something that makes me feel good. And obviously sometimes there are some constraints, like if you're going to a super formal event, maybe you need to wear something somewhat formal. But I just mean those times where you wear the thing that you feel like you should wear as opposed to the thing that you feel good in. I'm just encouraging you to wear the thing you feel good in and to be comfortable, and to feel confident taking risks and wearing what you like. Realistically, we're all just people and we shouldn't probably focus too much on how we look all the time, I get that. But I also think sometimes we forget to appreciate our own beauty or what we have to offer, and it's easy to just focus on what we don't like and not what we do. And so, I think one way to actually feel better about your wardrobe is more about you and how you feel about yourself and how you feel about how you look. Even if you don't like a lot of what you look like, there's probably something that you do like. And even if it's not entirely external, maybe it's even internal, maybe it's the energy that you bring to a space. But there is something about your presence that you probably appreciate in yourself because you are going out into the world doing your best to put your best foot forward, to make connections, to be the best person you can be. And we forget to appreciate what we like about our style or what we like about features about ourselves and our appearance. And so that's something I would just encourage you to take a little time to do. What do I bring to the table and what do I offer? And what shines through regardless of what I'm wearing? Part of feeling good about your wardrobe is really focusing on appreciating yourself. Anyway, that's most of what I've got for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how to appreciate yourself or your wardrobe more, how to curate it better, how to make it streamlined and more appealing to you. I also have that link and information about the MD hair products below. I absolutely love them. I'd really encourage you to try them if hair loss or hair thinning is something that you're dealing with. Thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.